Hey everybody, happy Oscar Sunday. I'm just looking over a blog I just prepared for Zinni62.com about an old favorite subject of mine that is Steven Donziger and his attempt to get, or I should really say extort billions from Chevron over activities he claims Chevron did in Ecuador that were in point of fact never done. The story goes like this. Between 1967 and 1992, Texaco was in a partnership with the country of Ecuador, a company that they created called Texpet. Now, Chevron bought Texaco in 2001 and essentially inherited what was left of the Texpet operations in Ecuador. Now, by the time Chevron bought Texaco, Texpet was actually mostly owned and ran by the state of Ecuador, it's the country of Ecuador, excuse me, itself, I wanted to say the state, but mostly owned by Ecuador, in fact, to the tune of about 67%. Now, the change in responsibility of operating Texpet had, changed, had shifted so drastically that by 1989, no, I mean, no oil production was done at all by Texaco, and all of it was done by Ecuador. That is what Chevron bought into when it purchased Texaco in 2001 and really consummated the deal in 2005. It also bought into a contract that Texaco had signed to conduct environmental cleanup work for its share, if you will, of the oil production done in the Amazon portion of Ecuador. Now, Steve Donziger felt like there was an opportunity to really make billions of dollars, he did say that, billions of dollars, and represent the indigenous people there. The truth of the matter is that the indigenous people have been historically treated like crap by the rich, entitled and entitled politicians and capitalists who are native to Ecuador, not foreigners, not foreign organizations. And in point of fact, Chevron, keep in mind, was never there. By the time of Don Ziger's filing, Petro Ecuador had taken over and operated what were once Texaco's operations in Ecuador. In seeking to gain the largest plaintiff reward in history, Don Ziger cozied up to the president, Rafael Correo of Ecuador. He bribed judges. He hired essentially thugs to intimidate the court. In short, he did a number of actions, including falsifying consultants' reports so that they would say what he wanted them to say about how, quote, bad Chevron was, right? Now it's Chevron and not Texaco. And even falsifying data. All of this, all of this culminated in a lawsuit against him, accusing Don Zinger of, among other things, RICO. Racketeer Influenced Corrupt Organizations Act violations, okay? So, last week, the court in New York, uh, a court presided over by one Judge Lewis Cap uh, Kaplan, excuse me, awarded in favor of Chevron that Don Sigger was to play the company 800 thousand dollars that's right eight hundred thousand dollars and so as i write in my blog post now the shoe is under on the other foot the fraud bribery extortion and the falsified scientific findings that don Ziger and his plaintiffs team used against chevron came to light and in turn so did the judgment against don Ziger. he became the poster boy for finding that he broke racketeer influence corrupt organizations Act laws and in his chase for the billions, right? 
And so some of the highlights are that, first of all, Judge Kaplan reviewed the procedures of the case and in particular noted the fact that Don Ziegler and his co-conspirators fraud was well documented and that they were found liable after trial on appeal in which they did not contest the facts. No, they did not contest the facts, okay? Judge Kaplan also discussed the facts leading up to the dispute, including Chevron's costs, Don Ziegler's belated objections, and other ir irrelevant motions that he made. At one point, the court described one of Don Ziegler's motions as an intemperate, unsupported, and hyperbolic letter complaining of the court's determination. Anyway, the, the details of the outcome of this case are right in my blog. You read all about them. For example, here's some information that I pass on to you as well. Judge Kaplan dismissed as irrelevant Don Ziegler's claims about environmental pollution in Ecuador and rejected Don Ziegler's argument that Chevron committed fraud on the court, and he specifically rejected the notion that Chevron somehow was involved in perjury. The court reiterated there was abundant evidence that Judge Guerrero's, this is um, Alberto Guerrero, Judge Guerrero's decision to cooperate with Chevron and ultimately to testify in the case would have exposed him and his family to serious risks to personal safety and security had they remained in Ecuador. His decision to testify forced him to become an exile from his native country. That's the quote from the court. On this basis, the court repeated its findings that Chevron's payments to Guerrero were reasonable and justified. And Guerrero was one of the people um, that, he was one of the judges that was intimidated, um, Alberto Guerrero, by Don Ziger. And so Chevron was able to get this man to, at great risk to himself, come forward and testify against Don Ziger and report on the illegal activities Don Ziger had conducted that led to this RICO lawsuit and his loss, I might add. But Guerrero did so at great risk to his own life. So anyway, those are the basics. You can read the rest right here. I'm reading it right to you right here at zinni62.com. Okay, I'll see you all.